In our spotlight today, the death of Elijah McLean. The two officers charged in connection with his death in 2019 appearing in court today. A lieutenant testifying to the more than 40 videos that were taken that day. Portions of some of that dramatic body cam video played in court. Prosecutors claimed that the officers ignored McLean's, McLean's pleas for help and failed to follow the department training. Defense lawyers say the death was tragic, but that the officers were not at fault. They blame the paramedics. Let's bring back our panel, Mike Muse, John Kako, Rachel Bade, and joining the discussion is ABC News legal contributor Shauna Lloyd, who is also a managing partner at the Cochran firm. Shauna, let's start with you. Recap the headlines from this trial today and the prosecution strategy here. So what the prosecution is going to show and part of what the witness was talking about today was that they're trying to distill down the actual audio from the video so that way the jurors have a clear picture of what actually transpired. And that's really important because the words matter, the intention matter, and they want the jurors to be able to see it and hear that very clearly. Mike, I mean, some people say this case was a rallying cry. You know, give us your reaction to this trial now playing out and, and the body camera video that we're seeing released. It's a rallying cry for the community, but it's also to voting in action. I created a voting system called Vote Quadrant that teaches people how to vote locally, and this is their vote in action. The governor actually appointed a special prosecutor, the attorney general, to move forward with this case because the current district attorney decided that he didn't have enough sufficient evidence to move forward. Elizabeth, that's the exact same thing that happened with Minnesota when the governor of Minnesota had to appoint a special prosecutor, Attorney General Ellis, when that district attorney felt that he did, that when he charged them with less charges where the community didn't feel was sufficient enough. And so this is a case of the public and community having their say and the importance of voting moving forward um, at a time, Elizabeth, where unfortunately we're having to have these conversations back to back. The larger question I think we have to address holding media to task is how do they represent black boys in the media? Unfortunately, sometimes the American public sees young black boys as black men and treats them accordingly and creates this fear factor. And so that is something that I am challenging the media and journalists in terms of how to recraft that messaging better. Well, let's broaden, and it's such a great point that you raise, I, and we've been talking, messaging seems to be the theme here from the panel. Yeah. You know, I, I want to talk a little bit about the messaging over on, on Capitol Hill related to this. We've heard a lot of talk in the wake of, of, of George Floyd, in the wake of Elijah McClain initially, about police reform, but obviously nothing done. So, John Keck, I'll go to you first. You know, you yeah, were there. You used to be I, there. I tried to take, I was part of the effort to have police reform legislation. It's extremely difficult, but when you look at this case, it's just a sad and tragic case. And what, what make, uh, there, there is a lot of justice already brought in this case because the parents brought a civil rights lawsuit and whacked, the, whacked them hard with a $15 million judgment against them. <laughs> so that's great. And they should. And, and that, that will reverberate and that will cause change. What's hard about this case, as tragic as it is, is that the autopsy report shows that he died because of an over, um, uh, a, 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 a overly large dose of ketamine that was given to him. Why you're giving ketamine to someone by a paramedic is about beyond me. So uh, that makes this case a hard case to prove. I've tried a lot of murder cases. I've tried police corruption cases. Uh, this would be a, this is a very tough case to prove. It may, they may be able to get him on the assault charge, but I think it's going to be a hard case to get him on the murder charge because of the autopsy report. As tragic as this is, but make no mistake, it's righteous that we're talking about it. And it's righteous that the civil lawsuit was brought, and uh, it's probably just that they're bringing this trial uh, so people can judge for themselves. Shauna, you jump in there. Is this a hard case to make? It's interesting. I think that the civil rights portion of this does do some justice. But really what we're looking at is a real deficiency when it comes to the police department. Mm -hmm. Here we have a young man that was very clear about who he was. He stated, please respect my boundaries. He was not aggressive. He was actually not stopped for doing anything criminal. There had been no criminal act. He was not in process of anything criminal. So the idea that you stop someone, they give all the right responses, and we end and up here speaks to the broader issue that we're dealing with is that law enforcement is not being trained to handle these situations in the right way. Now when we look at a jury and talk about the legal standard, 
that's a little bit different. What we're looking at is that they actually decided that they were going to stop him, which they have the right to do. However, in the takedown, there's a lot of that that needs to be examined. Why was it necessary to use that type of a hold when he was not actively resisting or posing a threat? Why is it his vitals were not checked? Those are all things that are required and what they were trained on. And that's what the jury's going to be looking at to make a determination, because Colorado says that you can't take a gross deviation from reasonable standard and create this type of a situation. Rachel, to you, your thoughts on, on this case, and, and is there any conversation of this from your vantage point over there on, on Capitol Hill uh, to the broader question of, of justice and, and to the specifics of, of what Shauna just laid out too? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not a lawyer. I couldn't speak to the specifics of this case, but in terms of legislation, and you had asked, you know, John Katko here on this panel about that, uh, there's been a lot of talk about policing reform. Uh, it's just not gone anywhere. I mean, the sad part is here on Capitol Hill, Republicans and Democrats both uh, have talked about banning chokeholds. I mean, I think there there was bills, you know, in both chambers to ban police department funding for police departments that don't, you know, restrict the use of chokeholds, of an effective ban. And yet those talk, those talks broke down between, uh, you know, Republicans and Democrats over questions of qualified immunity, whether you can sue, civilly sue uh, police officers. And so, you know, a lot of areas of agreement, but because of certain sticking points, things just don't move. Uh, and that's the sad part about all of this. Things don't move. A common theme from over there. Rachel Bade, Mike Muse, John Katko, and John Lloyd. Thank you all so much today. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.